Hey guys, yeah, so back in uh, Gloucester at uh, our place and um, yeah, what I'm trying to do is a video like the first one I did which is a bit of a walk around the truck and we'll talk about what things work, work well and uh, you know, a bit of a summary from the trip. It just started raining, hopefully it doesn't rain too much. Um, yeah, so we'll do a walk around the car then we'll have a look inside, how about that? Um, just bull bar, you know, pretty standard. Scrub rails, these were brilliant. Glenn didn't have these and I know he wished he did. Side rails were great. Hey, Toddy. Right. Right, mate. This is my new, new uh, hoodie. I like the drift to make it happen. So, thanks bro. Throw that um, there, mate. Eh? All good? Yeah, so, bar important of course um, didn't use the winch at all but of course you need to have it these driving lights I mentioned on the trip they were brilliant um, you know these come loose a little bit so I tighten them up but honestly uh, on the 76 is I've got the ARB ones They're fairly old now all good Toddy thanks bro but um, I've got the light bar a small light bar on the roof um, on the 76 and two of the ARB ones and these lights here seem to be more bright than the the ones on the 76 including the light bar i don't know these were brilliant so uh yeah really surprised with that I, that's all i use i've got this light bar up top here which turned up just before we left but we didn't really use it because being up there it just shined off the bonnet shined off the uh, antenna and by shining you know it, it takes away any good it's doing really so i, I basically didn't use that in 12,000 k's uh where I thought it would have been awesome, you know. Um, so on the 76, I've got a small light bar. And what I've done is put some plastic underneath here at about 50 mils, which sort of stops that. It gets the shadow off the front of the bonnet. So you really need that shadow off the front of the bonnet and then it'll be probably pretty good. But yeah, I basically didn't use that at all. Uh, what else? Trying to make sure I miss anything. Oh, this sand flag. I'll grab it out of the back. Yeah, this is brilliant. So this comes in three pieces. You can see that's bolted on there. And I noticed a couple of people on the one guy on the truck. He's the, the fellow, really nice bloke, the Sri Lankan man who, who pulled uh, the boys out of Well 46. And he was sort of saying that he couldn't, his sand flag kept coming off and he, he didn't run it. But um, we didn't have any problems with this. This was pretty much on the whole trip. And uh, look at that, there's your sand flag there. Uh, we had the two sections on there and it was brilliant it didn't move the whole trip you're going through extreme overgrown trees and scrub and this thing uh, didn't miss the beat so we've got them on the website now they're made by a local company in western australia and with that mount there you can just take them on and off so easy uh it was great i think i've seen some cars uh more than one a few cars had the sand flag on the back of the top of their vehicle and uh i don't know why you'd have it there the first thing you need to see when you come over to sand hill is that sand flag it needs to be on the front um so why do have it on the back i'm not sure and also when it's up so high coming through that thick overgrown scrub which is like a tunnel it, they're more likely to get rubbed off or broken off so um very important you got a good mount and this little system here i think was just brilliant you know you can see that just bolts it straight on so i'll leave that on there the UHF radio was good, didn't have any problems with that. Um, nice strong book, um, antenna. You don't need any longer than that, that's for sure. But that was great. Uh, these little um, loops here, kind of put those on. And, and as you saw, we had those the wires to start with and the ropes that uh, would just stop the scrub hitting in here. They were great. I mean, you probably could tie a rope around there, but this sort of kept it in position. If it was tied around, it would sort of move. That was great and also up here so um they were just guy ropes i suggest you know you've always got guy ropes anyway and don't be afraid to put those on tie them on if you need to if you're going through thick scrub it works brilliant um once we go on the track you know we did turn this um snorkel around just use my, my knife right so i turned that around that way and that was also very important just like that uh if that had been facing the front it would have got ripped off so 
that's that's an easy thing to do keep that in mind you can turn that around no problems at all a lot of small things like this i had we were doing a video on the track and i heard this knocking noise i couldn't figure out what it was and it was this here you can see that that had come out and just got ripped out by the scrub so uh a bit of that tape um fix that but you know imagine you know that's not easy to get out but that that rough scrub um, when you're driving through it just does a lot of damage these mirrors uh, yeah they're the clear view uh, it would have been nice if you could press a button and this comes in and out you know because we were pulling these in and out a lot basically if they're in of course you can't see anything behind you you can't see where the guy is behind you and you can't back up but a lot of times so we'd have them out whenever we could but every time we come to thick scrub we pull them in but you know you wind your window down put your hand out to get them and if you're not careful, you'd, you know, damage your hand because, you know, you don't want to stop. So we had to be quite careful pulling them in. But um, these are the ones you know, they come right out and and they come in. So, yeah, like I said, they don't come in that far. You know, it'd be nice if they come in further than that. But anyway, we, we didn't have any problem. Very solid. And they're still on there. So uh, they, they were brilliant. I found this little mirror down the bottom good as well. As I mentioned, I had that aim so that uh, was pointing down the tire here and that made that made it great I was often keeping an eye on those tires that I could see them and if I was thought I had a flat tire which one time I did have a flat on the way down from Newman I could see it and pulled over straight away um, roof rack here that's the Rhino rack um, that was brilliant because it did the job didn't hear any vibration any rattles Nothing came loose. Had a bit of gear on there. I had two jerry cans on the top the whole time, uh, or on the track full. So there's 40 kilos. Um, bit of gear in here, and the max tracks on the other side. So didn't have any problems. That was great. Um, in the last video, the 10, 10 things I learned of the of the canning, I did mention four jerry cans, and I mentioned three. So what it was, I had four with me, but uh, at Maluna I only filled up three, and. Uh, so basically I carried 60 litres with me, but I had the fourth one in the back that was, was empty. So I left that in broom. So that was the difference between four and three. We'll get up there in a sec. Starlink, of course, we talked about that, sitting there, bolted on. Pretty much had no trouble with that at all, but we had to face south, use a lot of power. And uh, we do still have a little problem with the switch, although it didn't, didn't cause a problem. We, uh, it worked every time we needed it to. Um, but I do have to fix up this switch a little bit it's a nice size bag on the top here. What I'll do is I'll, I'll pull it down, I think. I made this specially for the trip. On top here I've got our loop straps, so it's just a thumb strap, stainless steel with a carabiner. They work brilliant. And let's see what I've got in here. So I didn't use this a lot, I didn't get into here very much. But uh, definitely essential to carry now. This is a new bag that's not available, I only just made it for this trip because this fitted the exact space I had left over. So I'm gonna make this available and um, it'll be on the website soon. Just a, a different size. Right, my boots, uh, jiggler hose. This is very important and also important to keep it clean. So that was in there. Spare jerry can. This is some um, spares. That was one of my, one of my bags I had uh, beer in. And as you can see, some spares there, hoses, fuel filter, bit of leather for tying things up, say a muffler or something that can get hot, won't burn through. Uh, spare belt and a bit of wire, so some spares in there. Yeah, it's really important with bull dust and everything that, especially that hose, kept very clean. Half, half, um, no, medium hex tarp. 
Uh, I didn't use that, didn't need it at all, but something, you know, if we got some bad weather at camp, I would have 100% put that up if we needed to, but um, did not need that. Well, I would definitely uh, carry that. This is a little um, the toilet, okay. So we didn't need this at all, didn't use it once. But uh, if we're in a, in a camp where, you know, maybe a caravan park or somewhere we had to stay, um, where you can't walk off in the bush with a shovel, this can be set up underneath the uh, ensuite. And uh, we've got the other parts here as well. So that's a great little toilet. We pretty much always carry it. But I don't, we hardly ever use it, but the time you need it, you know, what else do you do? So this is a two bag system. You've got, this goes inside there. You do your business inside there. You've got this powder. It's like a, it's a military type stuff. So you put this um, powder in there and it turns all your waste into, into solid crystals or crystals that doesn't have any smell. When you're finished, you can um, put it in this, it's a tough, um, you know, uh, gray bag. Very tough, just a Ziploc bag, but it's a very tough bag. It's grey, you can't see inside, and so this blue bag, which, you know, the waste is in there, goes inside this, and then just pop that in your rubbish bag, and it can be, it can go then into any, any rubbish bin, you know, which is, um, which is pretty handy, uh, because that, that powder makes the waste inert, um, so it's a very good system, we don't use it a lot, but I do carry it, because, um, you know, the time you do need it, you've, you've got it there. Quite lightweight, and that's so that's what's in that bag. Um, wait, come on, come on. Come on. In the front here, just got a little handheld. Uh, that's pretty much on 40. So on the dunes, we had this running all the time. I was calling out every, you know, 10 minutes or so just ahead and that, that was good because a couple of people picked up. There's one guy on the other side of the dunes from Tamworth in a little truck, he was having lunch. He was just about to come over the sand hill. We would have met literally on top of the sand hill. And I said, I'm, you know, this is Drifter Crew heading north. And he goes, oh mate, I'm, I'm heading south. And he turned out it was just on the other side of the hill. So we would have met literally. And uh, when you got your sand flag but you really do not want to meet someone on, on the sand hills you're powering to get up and all you can see is the, is the sky when you go over so you know having a separate i mean you could join in your same radio so it's scanning we, we run on 72 and then 40 back and forth but I, I don't like doing that so a little separate mic is good uh radio map and In here, got your GPS. We talked about that. That was uh, that was brilliant. Once we got the lead running, that was uh, that was great. Just a Type C lead. This is another little product that I've got. There's all my hankies where they got to. I'm looking for them. Look at this. It's just got a lot of stuff in it. Um, Pencils, highlighter for the map, Panadol, Revolt Tyrone if I do my back in, charger, hay fever tablets, license, you know, a few coins, pretty handy stuff. So that's just a little bag. These aren't on the website either, it's got some cat around the top. These just slide in here and um, Underneath, next to the seat, look at that. There's one here as well for Downey. And that was, uh, that was great. We use it all the time, so I'll, I'll get them available. A little rear mount for the phone. Um, that's about it in the cockpit. Ooh. In the back here, yeah, we've got the water bladder. I mentioned that on a video just went up. That's what I do. Um, look at that there, works great. We talked about how we don't use this for drinking water, but somebody mentioned to get a some sort of filter, which is a good idea. I haven't uh, had needed to do that because the little uh, 10 litre works well for us. Um, but it wouldn't be a bad idea. I'm going to have a look into getting a filter. So if you, you know carried one, you need to. 
Again, nothing wrong drink this water, but uh, when you're putting water into it at different places all over, all over the country, you just don't know what's going in. And um, most of the time we found when, when people have had a problem with, it, with the, the bladder is they've borrowed somebody's hose and that hose happens to be full of algae and they've pumped the water in and all that algae's gone inside and they, they ring up and say, oh, my bladder's got algae in it. But it's come from the hose you put in. I've done that myself up in Queensland. A mate filled up one of the bladders in the 76 on the Cape York trip, full of algae, you know, and uh, that's what it turned out to be. So that's how I learned from myself. But uh, I will look at a, a filter. Stock and bags are great. Uh, just quick thing in here. This is a little bag that we're gonna put on the website as well. Uh, more hankies. When I was a kid, or even now, I got shocking hay fever um, in Blaney. Terrible hay fever and uh, so I've got a, I don't know, just something I've got to carry all the time. This got my torch in it and that. So I kept that in there and I've got my keys and I used to put this in the rooftop tent just down the side. So I keep all that stuff together, you know, a little water bottle, so you have a drink of water the night, your hanky, the torch, your headlight torch. So I would carry that with me up in the tent and, um, you know, it just keeps it all together. So this little bag was quite handy for that. Um, Ball. Sit down, Drifty. All right, so another thing's been great. That's our little cup, you know, clean your teeth every night, so that's there. My hat. Um, oh, I met a mate in um, Mick and Patty, the boys that were we met on the canning on the first day. Uh, they're on the video, and we were in Sydney on the way back. We pulled up in North Sydney. I uh, had to do something in Sydney and uh, pulled up on the side of the road. And there was uh, Paddy and he, he was, he just finished driving his son to school and he's like, Luke, drift over in the canning. And we went over and we literally parked in front of his house in North Sydney just a couple of days ago. And, uh, and we saw him in the canning three weeks earlier. So that was pretty cool. And we went and uh, had a chat to Paddy and he gave me this book, End of an Era from Len Bedell. So uh, I'm gonna read that. And um, yeah, I mean, he gave it to me. So. You know, a lot of the, well, nearly all of that country was opened up by, by Len Bedell. Uh, from, um, you know, right down here where the, uh, the military had some area. Uh, the Amber Dell, the Gun Barrel. We went across the Gun Barrel. You got the Gary Highway. And, uh, oh, I can't remember what that one's called. But, you know, and then he didn't do the, the, the uh, canning. But most of the other tracks in WA, the those Outback tracks are all, of course, Lembadell. So a great book, and I really appreciate Paddy for giving me that. I'm going to read it and give it to my dad because he's a big Lembadell fan. And certainly makes a big difference if you're out there and you understand a lot more of the history. It makes a big difference, which I didn't, but next time I will. Okay, something else that's been great is um, these towels. Obviously a bit dirty, but they're a, um, a Drifter Stockton towel. And if I, you know, in, on the beach in Broome, went for a swim, all I need is that, you know, because these are just a microfiber towel, but they're very soft. And the good thing, because they've got that length on them, that's all you need to, you know, dry yourself, you know. You can dry down your back. And I had a few showers there, um, Kunawaraji. That's all I needed, you know. So these are brilliant. So I've got several of them tucked in here. I've found that having, having a good cloth, and I've got cloths everywhere here. There's four or five of them, little hand towels. You wash your face, wash your hands, you need a hand towel. Um, I mean, these are obviously a bit dirty, but you know, it's dirty out there. Um, I really like having a tan towel to be able to get to as soon as I'm, I need it, you know, without, can't find your hand towel, nothing worse, you know. So I've got half a dozen of them. They were brilliant. And uh, you can use them for cleaning your windscreen, a hundred uses, you know. Um, yeah, so they were really good, and I keep one of them in my bag as well. Obviously a bit cleaner, and you can use that for having a shower, having a swim anywhere. So they were great. Um, and then I've also got, yeah, this is the other one I had. That's a Drifter Stockton towel, microfiber. So it's very, very lightweight, and again, dries quickly. You don't want a big, you definitely don't want a big cotton towel on a trip. Gets wet, yet at night, it just doesn't, not going to dry it on you. But this is microfiber, very light. Look how small it folds up. And just tuck in there. Um, yeah, so they were brilliant. This bag's a bit too big. It was just a spare bag I had, but that's the uh, windscreen cover, which I used several times for 
you know, if it was just sort of dirt on the ground, I mean, I should have used it each time, but a bit of a hurry, but a lot of the time you're going to have burrs on the ground. If you pull off the road, sometimes there's burrs an inch wide, you know, and uh, that's that's really important. So that's got canvas both sides and insulation in the middle. It's a windscreen protector, but it's also brilliant for, uh, you know, underneath your vehicle, climbing around underneath there. So that was great. Eat your seats up on the back here. Couple of good hats, of course, really important. Um, Darren has got one as well. So um, yeah, good Akuba is really important. These, uh, Oh, the drifted beanie was great. Nothing worse you go out and um, it's cold and you haven't got a beanie, you know. So I've, I've got a spare beanie, I always carry a spare one. Rear seat pockets were brilliant just for torches and different things. Uh, the drifter stocked and map, you know, basically planning your trip and where you're going, that's got everything on there. This was great. Uh, this was our bungee cords, just some aluminium angle iron. Uh, with bungee cord that was probably one of the handiest things on the whole trip it enabled us to get a lot of stuff you can see that up there uh, those cushions and jumpers this big jumper was huge so that just um, tucks up in there so having those um, bungee cords was was absolutely brilliant and uh, been something I've been wanting on for a while also the hats they can sit I originally did it just for the hat so they can sit up there like that and the bungee cord and it, it just keeps them without getting squashed up because on all the other trips your hat always ends up down here and everything ends on top of it they all get squashed i hate having my hat you know out of out of shape you know so um the fridge here in the fridge bag i've got that tied down um look that's probably that's probably still three quarters full from when we left um I'm glad we took it. If I did that same trip again, I might be a little bit more careful how I pack and I probably could get away without it because, what do you think, Darren? Did we use it a lot? Yeah. We did. Mm. Oh, I didn't touch it. Yeah. But um, you using the food out of it? Yes. Oh, there you go. Mm. Could, you, you, could you cope without that or not? Yes. Uh, not really. Mm. Well, not, not the trip like canning, mm. like isolated. Yeah. It's a small trip and we can topping up the supply we don't need it yeah. but this trip like this i think we need it i mean it definitely you're almost four weeks on the road from dubbo mm. heading west we didn't go through alice there's nearly nothing mm. uh, really uh, we can get good resupply so glad we had it if i it, really i think if we could cope for exactly that trip with half that size so that was a 40 liter if you had a smaller one it'd be nice but um yeah you know anyway glad i took it um we found, I mean, you don't eat that much, really. We, we got a lot of rice too. So, you know, the, the main carbohydrates, rice, um, which is great. It's easy to cook, easy to store. A um, lot, lot of the potatoes, for example, and then some steak and meat and things like that. Uh, some veggies, you, you don't need much actually. So anyway, the fridge was there. Let's have a quick look in here. Uh, some washing detergent. I washed them. Um, Got the buckets here. This, these buckets are brilliant. I use that with soapy water for the tyres to, um, you know, to uh, find where the holes were. I use them with the detergent for um, washing my clothes. So I did that a couple of times. Just with some of the boards. I, I didn't use these filters, but I, I had them. Could have cleaned them out if I had to refill that bladder with uh, with a bucket from one of the boards. You know, I didn't fill the water from the bores we just didn't need to but if I had to sit that on top of the in the top okay that can go in the top there clean it out of course and then we could use the bucket just to tip water straight into the bladder so I had those for that didn't need them um, this stuff is brilliant the silicon spray these are available in all our stores um, this is a new Australian made you know uh, like an inox type thing very good bug cleaner important mozzie spray um hand cleaner didn't didn't use that uh degreaser and some grease so that's all in there these little um alia box bags look at that 
that's a alley box bag clear top so that is ideal for that in here was a little bit dusty but that's all my electrical gear okay so i've got actually a small charger if my battery went flat i could uh, run that off a power cord from my lithium and charge my battery in the front um wire strippers probably the handiest thing you can have really is a is a multimeter all right um so get that on volts and you can do a lot with that so just to see what's happening um yeah so that's important but you've also got to know how to use it and it's there if you don't know much of electronics it's it's not much point but if you can learn the basics of a voltmeter um, they're invaluable if you've got an electrical problem the first thing you need to do is a, either a test lamp which only gives you power or no power but a voltmeter will, will tell you a lot so it's worthwhile learning how to use that right so that's in there um, got a bit of dust in here but really I just had to adjust this to make that tighter and I haven't done that um, I should have but you can see that's not quite tight and that's why it's dusty a few people said oh your seals not working but it's just a bit loose all right so in here uh, this is my didn't need to carry this although I use it quite a bit my shavings so that's my uh, pitch soaked uh, pine uh, okay that's just my fire making bag so pretty much in the desert you grab some small sticks and some grass life are easy but there's a few times where you know you need some kindling and, and i love carrying that um this is our bag with spare pillows and some extra blankets so i've got one extra blanket um a couple of dryer bones and some extra pillows so you know at night time we do have the main pillows in the bed but if you're up there reading a book or your phone you need to have an extra pillow under your head so you're not too far back so we carry those that's in there this is all how it goes in that's all that's left of my charcoal so i took a bag and a half of charcoal and that's there's not much left in there so we use a lot of charcoal and glenn also had a full bag here's our little pizza oven we use that a few times um, I could have done without that, but it was great to have. Here's our wine bag. A um, few bottles left in there. That's been great. Recovery gear. You know, not a lot in there at the moment. Most of it's on the back. But that's got all my recovery gear. I like to keep most of the gear I'm using on the back here. You can see that. Um, because it's just easy to get to. Mostly using that. that um, snatch rope winch extension shackles all there easy to access straight away so i'll take that off soon and put it back in the bag this is my tool bag pretty much a good set of drills three batteries a drill impact and a uh, grinder a hammer Got uh, some small basics. Didn't need that. Um, screwdrivers, a couple of small things. But I take this everywhere with me wherever I go. Um, you know, a bunch of uh, nuts and bolts. There's your uh, grinding and uh, cutting blades. And this one's your you know your, your tool bits so that's got everything i need on there drill bits whatever so again i could have left a little bit of that out but you don't know when you're going to need it you know who knows you might end up on a cattle station and you need to give a bloke a hand or um, wherever you are so i take that with me everywhere this little, um shower system was brilliant glad i took this 100 um, percent just that like that the cables are in or the, the hose are in here and we've only, i've got a spare gas but we haven't um we didn't use we didn't use a full can of gas so it's still running um 
I guess we had half, three, four showers each, so maybe eight showers all up. And um, that's been great. Now, what I did notice before I left is um, I had to cut out, somebody mentioned on a video about, we, I put this mesh on here. It does get a little bit hot. I didn't think it was a problem, but still, I made this cut out. But then you can't pick it up, as you can see. It's a bit messy. So what I've done, a few things in here I'll show you in a minute, but um, I've just come back from canvas in, in, in a drifter, and you can see the difference, right? I filled this up full of other bags, but I've got the straps on the side here. So it's still the same design with the cutout, but the straps are on the side, reinforced. So they're going to be available now. And, uh, and um, you know, yeah, if your little companion uh, shower system, that is uh, brilliant, lightweight, easy to use, and uh, I'd take that 100% any time. So here's the ladder. Just seems to fit good there. This ladder bag is brilliant. You know, if you haven't got one of the ladder bags, make sure you get one. Holds all together, keeps the dust and dirt out. With these ladders, very important, they all slide together. Very important not to let the dust and dirt get into them as much as possible. You get a little bit of sand in them and they can jam up and, you know, then it's, um, you know, if you can't put them together, it's, it's a nightmare. So treat them carefully, keep them clean. Ladder bags are brilliant. You can always use it on the ground. You'll see is, um, you know, for, for put your boots on or whatever. Um, although also, of course, you have to keep your boots, you know, inside the truck during the night. The dingoes will 100% take your boots away and you'll never see it again charger here for the uh, chainsaw and the um, Makita battery recharge that a few times there's my little blower which was brilliant we talked about that in the last video you would have seen um, use this all the time I wouldn't go anywhere without that got some spare UHFs up here so I carry three or four in total the reason I carry a few more is, is in case, uh, one for when you're on the tracks, running up and down, caught, you know, for recovery, and a couple for spares in case one goes flat and someone's radio breaks or, or someone hasn't got one. There's always someone who hasn't got a radio or the radio breaks, so I carry four of those little radios. This is our, this is our, oh, one of the most essential bits of kit for downing. <laughs> um, Got to be burnt there. But uh, such a simple system, right? That's the traditional way of cooking rice. You soak your rice, you, you stick your rice, you can buy in Asian shops, soak it, sit it in there in water. You only need a tiny bit of water, put it on the fire, the charcoal, it steams, you have a lid on here, and then you pull it out and you put it in that. So we, we, we were eating this nearly every day. The good thing with the two, you can, you can reheat it, you can uh, have it cold, you can throw it in a stir fry or fried rice uh, the next day. So well, that's sort of a little bulky. It's very lightweight. And uh, yeah, we don't go anywhere without that. And um, I mean, if you look at the extra space it takes, um, I'll wait, pull that away. The extra space it takes, um, you know, it's nowhere near as heavy or bulky as a bag of potatoes. That's a little cook pot, a Thai cook pot, which these go together. Again, we're always eating this. So that's a Stockton uh, uh, billy, nice and clean. That, that was used every day. That fits great in the cook pot. And you've got our Thai cook pot and the, the, the thing there. So this would, um, you know, this, this would sit on there cook your rice, take that off, cook your steaks, there's dinner done. You know, so that was brilliant. Um, you can buy these from Asian grocery shops. We started selling them, but honestly, too many people were whinging, you know, got a little bit of rust on them and they'd want, they're 50 bucks, you know, we made nothing on them, just trying to keep Darren's mum in a bit of work. She was driving around Bangkok in a taxi, picking these up from markets, but you know, it's it's pretty rough and ready, but it, it, it's, it's how they are, you know, everyone was whinging you know about stuff and so we stopped selling them but you can get them and i carry we carried that everywhere and we use that every day and we wouldn't go anywhere without that um for two people it's brilliant two three 
any more than that you're going to need something a little bit bigger um, these as well you can get from asian grocery shops that's a little bag i made for it all right what else we got this is a little stockton drinks table this is great i love that um very lightweight only weighs a kilo or two you can see here i've got it packed as well everything's got to go exactly in there that one goes on top because it's got a flat top other things can go on top this way in i don't want it like that because then these fluff about and get messy so everything's in the exact place as you can see but that drinks table was brilliant i'd take that all the time we got that out every day first time whenever we pulled up first thing we do is got these little stools out so quick and easy for lunchtime. You can sit on those. Uh, once you get your chairs out, you can put your feet up on them, put your drink on them even. These are brilliant. We use them every time we stopped. This is our bamboo table, which also is handy. Okay. We didn't use it so much, but we, we definitely did. That's a little bamboo table. Um, I could have got away without that, but I, I'm glad I carried it. This is our aluminium table okay so wood grain aluminium table i love it because it's lightweight it's aluminium okay you can um very versatile lightweight folds away easy and uh this goes next to the fire table uh around the fire pit so that's a great great bit of gear this is our fire table um again essential bit of kit for us we didn't tend to use the fire pit so much okay that's the the fire table Make sure you get the bag for it, the canvas bag. And again, never go anywhere without that. As you saw as well, you know, we had Richard with us and uh, if we're on our own, we would use the, the fire pit nearly all the time. Um, but Richard loves, you know, pulling a big log up and doing it how he wants to. And so we didn't tend to use the fire pit so much because we're in a group. Um, but if we're just on our own, we normally use it all the time, but we did use it. There's a bit of a cutout here, you can see that. I used to pack that inside there, but it's a pain to put in, so now I just sit it separately, you know, so I sit that um, there. All right. So that fits in really well. This is a, um, a wall for the awning. It's also, you know, a canvas tarp, so you can use it on the ground if you had to, but it's one wall for the awning. Now, I didn't use that once, but it's one of the things I'm glad I carried. This is our two section table and I didn't need to take this, right, it's a beautiful table, lightweight. Only reason I took this is because with a group, if we're cooking for everybody, you need table space, you know, but normally when we do a, a group trip like this, we would um, take it in turns cooking dinner. You always do your own breakfast, own lunch, and then someone, each different car cooks one each night, um, which we normally would have done. but. Um, Brendan and the Kiwi boys, they tended to want to cook themselves, which is fine, so that was good. And uh, so, you know, Darren, he sort of um, cooked for Richard and we sort of joined forces with cooking, but because of that, we didn't need this table. Uh, we had one more one more truck and we cooked for everyone, we'd use that a lot. But uh, what worked out as well is it made a good barrier, you can see that, to stop this stuff falling off. So it worked out pretty good. What I'm going to do now is get one of these fridge dividers here and, and put across there. So just an aluminium piece. It just worked good to, that's full of diesel. Um, I would have filled that up in Kunawaraji. Still there as a spare, but you can see if you didn't have that table, this stuff could fall through easily. So that was pretty handy. Um, yeah, here's a fire pit here and i won't pull it out that's a fire pit great little spot i've got a little bracket here a steel bracket just to hold that in place so it doesn't fall over see that there and here's the battery for my um battery for the chainsaw all right this is brilliant again little electric chainsaw i would uh, never go anywhere without that um yeah this is a small one the 200C, uh, I did buy a new battery before I left, that was brilliant. I only had the one battery, and but I can charge it here. And I carried a, a spare chain, which, which I, I did swap over. Very hard to sharpen these small chains, but 
the secret to this little saw it's got a very small chain and uh, some of the bigger saws they don't have a lot of torque and they've got a some of the different saws electrics you know a lot of the other ones have got a big chain but not a lot of torque so it's just not spinning fast enough but this one's got a very small chain sharp as anything and it spins very fast so um, generally I like to use that one and that was um, a great way of putting it up there and um, use it every day this is a bag here that's the other pole for the um, for the sand flag I've got these are a new two stage pole right that's a two stage only brand new they're a little bit longer there's the four stage um, but you know yeah just easy to use so four stage two stage I think this is a new bag as well I got made up you can see that will hold the, the two stage so I'll have to get some of those available but that was a great bag and I'll have that up in here you can just see a bit of space I've got some brackets there so a little bit of space back of the canopy I've got that um, sitting up there this sort of trip you want to use every little bit of available space you can see the chainsaw sitting here because it fills up this little bit of space here so okay so this power box is great I've got this little charging area up here for the lights these are lights that have been brilliant um, we use them at least two of them every night and um, you know you've got the hanging you can hang those um, charge them off this so I would just you know next morning chuck it in there like that that's charging throw it in there and that's going so this little setup is brilliant um, kind of something like the traveler and a drive all my powers here you can see what's going on and uh, so that little box is brilliant there's the starting router the other thing on here I forgot to show you yeah it's um We use these every night as well. So these are the, um, oh, I can't remember the cord. They're a ground, uh, they're a light pole that stick into the ground. So light pole, you know. All right, so you just push that in the ground, wherever you are. And then, uh, now these are a power bank. You can charge your phone on them. So you've got USB out and uh, that's it. They were brilliant. Wherever you are, you've got some light. Um, there's a couple of times there where the ground is very hard we couldn't get that in you can't hammer them in just got to push them in but in that case all I did was hammered a, a peg in the ground and just double velcro that's this double sided velcro use that around a peg and then that held it up no worries so that worked really good so these are brilliant little bit of kit I've got two of those and um, we use them every night a lot of people have been asking about them because I saw them in the trip so that's the um, yeah, the, the hanging light pole that's pushed in the ground. Yeah, so all I carried was um, your ARB. You know, one of those inflator. Carried one of these, but didn't use that at all. I need, you know, it's good to carry that, but that's only if you can race on the beach and you can let ties in real quick. The, uh, the um, little blower was brilliant. We use that quite a bit. Very important for blowing out your air filter and need to do that every couple of days. Without that, you can't do it. Um, and we you know, use that several times every day. Having the air, the, the um, twin compressor mounted is, is brilliant. Um, so I've got that mounted there, your hose, and the switch. There's your um, patch kit. We, we would have seen that a lot. Absolutely essential. And, and and learn how to use them too but pretty much you know you just use that to clear your, ho your hole out so you push it in and out where the puncher is clear it out it's quite sharp that and that reams out the hole and you've got this one here all right so you get one of your little um plugs a bit of grease on there there's grease supplied in here a little bit of vaseline um push it through pull it out with some pliers and then just punch it in Hold that and pull it out so you can see there's a small split there all right so that's how it works so it goes in and it pulls out these are brilliant very easy to use 
and uh, absolutely essential. Um, I think, I mean, you know, having this mounted, if you can, if you've got room to mount that, you can put them under your seat sometimes, but if you can mount that, it's brilliant. Using it all the time, you know, and uh, I mean, Glenn had the ARB kit that's portable with the same setup, the little tank and the twin compressor and the leads, but it's a big case, you know, it's the size of that at least. And it's, it takes, you know, then you got, he's got to pop the bonnet, put the clamps on, it all takes time and it might even take a few minutes, but you know, when, you, you know, if you're in a hurry and there's dish to do all the time, it's, it's so convenient to have this mounted, just bang there, you know, um, so I really recommend trying to get that mounted. And the air tank is brilliant. Between tires, it's still pumping up. It pumps up your, your tires twice as fast when you've got the tank because it's, you know, when you start, your, your air tank's full and you can pump, you know, it in fairly quickly. The other thing, if you've got the tank, you can use the blower to blow out your air filter. If you don't have the tank, you just don't get any pressure. You can't blow out anything just off the hose unless you're running that little tank. So I highly recommend getting a, a, one of these tanks um, at least so then you've got the ability to use the blower, okay? So absolutely brilliant that bit of gear all the time all in there I think oh and the lights um, we, we sell these twin lights these are brilliant um, you've got twin lights there you've got a dimmer here all right so if a lot of bugs around have it on that um, one on each side I can switch it on and off here from the dimmer I can switch it on and off from here or I can turn them off from here as well. So they are brilliant. This is the um, canopy ensuite. Didn't use it a lot, but we did use it and 100% one of the best things we've ever done is having this canopy ensuite. So yeah, you know, on the beach at Cape Levique, um, if we're having a shower, we use it each time we're having a shower. Um, you know, sometimes we're camping, the fire's right there and everyone's sitting around and we're having a shower, you know, so of course important to have this but that was brilliant so easy and quick to use uh, these on the website works up here we can custom make these suit your um, canopy and the sides just come out and clip on here so that was fantastic all right the back here so I've got a rubbish bag all right so you can see how you know this big trip and those rear wheel cover bags have a move sitting there nice and tight you see so many times yeah, well, um, Paddy, we're we'll, we'll laughing about it in Sydney. Paddy had the 76 in the desert on the first day. He had a beautiful 76, all kitted out. And then we went around the back and he had one of those cheap little wheel cover bags hanging down like a, you know, they just look terrible. And um, they hang down, they're all loose. And so these, as you can see, nice and neat. Got a big pocket in the front. I've got a few um, leads and, you know, straps in there. Oh yeah, I meant to say your rags as well. Um, you need a couple of rags for in the morning when you're, Putting your gear away, you want to give them a quick wipe down. I hate putting away gear, of course, a bit of dirty, dirty, and even you get ash from the fire overnight. So you need a good rag, a couple of rags, and um, always when you're packing up, you, you want a rag in your pocket or with you that you can wipe things down. So these are the that's um, a few days worth of rubbish. Well, this is from all the trip, the whole trip back. All right. Look at that. So I can just now um, throw that in the bin, give it a rinse, throw it back in there, and um, that is uh, brilliant, you know, the way they work. This is 12 ounce canvas. We make a lot of these. There's a girl making these, uh, Anne. She's on these full time, you know, we've got a lot of different versions, different colours. So they are brilliant. This is how we do it like that. We just leave a little bit open there all the time. That's open all the time. And you just keep chucking your cans and bottles and rubbish in there. The cover gear here, just got around the strap or around, around the, you know, the load rail there. So that works really good. You really want your recovery gear quick, easy to access, and it works great if you can hang it off somewhere. That's good. It's probably locked. This one here, I didn't use so much. Um, it's actually just got, oh, it's got some fiber in it. Yeah. Didn't, you know, most of the time we had firewood everywhere, but that is half full of firewood and uh, 
We used that on the beach in Broome a couple of times, so that had spare firewood in there. Two spares, we talked about that, didn't really need the two spares. Um, didn't, didn't touch them at all. We'll talk about tyres in a sec. Um, but, you know, I'm glad I had them. If I did the trip again, I'd use some good um, tyre pressure monitors and probably just take the one spare. But again, the, the risk is if you just take one spare, you have to be super careful. What it is, people say, I've seen some comments that say, oh, I had a tyre blowout, you know. Tyres don't blow out, that's not what happens. What happens is you get a puncher, it runs flat, and, you know, it runs on the rim, you don't stop, you don't know, it's only a few minutes, and the tyre disintegrates um, because there's no air and it's just hitting on the rim, running along there. Then the tyre appears as if it's blown out. The tyre has not blown out, it's, it's you've driven on it flat. Now, so that's when a tyre pressure monitor will save that if they're running properly and uh, otherwise you can just sort of feel it, you know. But it is hard to feel and, you know, if you've only got one spare and you just make a mistake, you have a few tinnies or you just didn't feel it, you can destroy a tyre in minutes and then you've got no spare, okay. So um, you could do that a couple of times. So it's, it's really important to, to be aware of that. And, when people say they, their tyre blew out, it's not what happened, it's not a blowout at all, it's their tyre ran flat and they destroyed it by not stopping really. Quick look in here. Alright, this is our, uh, that's our back in here, little shovel. This is brilliant, that got used well every morning and uh, you know, digging a hole to go to the toilet, these are brilliant. Now you can dig a hole so much easier as a pick uh, rather than with a shovel, you know. They're small and, you know, a bit, you know, if you walk off in the bush with a big long end of shovel, it's obviously what you're doing. But there's a little bit more discreet and uh, brilliant little shovel. We do have an extra handle on it if we need to. Um, one thing I learned in the desert too is that the dingoes will dig up your waste very quickly overnight. and not all of it but a little bit of the toilet paper you see floating around is because the dingoes have dug it up so always carry a lighter um, in my dunny bags a lighter so you really want to light your paper because there's a fair chance I mean we were out there in the bush there one night and you know someone had gone to the toilet and the dingo had dug it up within an hour you know and there's paper on the ground and it was it was buried you know so keep that in mind dig a nice deep hole if you can put a stick over it, a rock on it or it also helps this is brilliant uh, that's my axe. Don't go anywhere without that. Didn't use it a lot because most time, again with Richard, we're able just to drag up some big logs and throw them on. Bit of spare rope. Oh, that's Darren's. Um, are you allowed to do that, Darren? I'm not sure. I didn't do that. Anyway, that's Darren's red sand. Um, a block. I've got a couple of blocks in here. That's also my, my larger bucket. I, I, I put it in there because I thought it was a good idea, but it was a bad idea because, I mean, you could hardly use it unless you cleaned it, and then you're going to waste water use cleaning it out, but filthy. Um, but if I needed to, I, I could have stored it inside. Um, but this is a bigger bucket. Actually, when I wash my clothes, I, I use this, and I just cleaned it out. But I, I need a better spot for it, really. Probably need to go in a bag. Um, this is, um, we use this once on the track, on the gun barrel, and also uh, on the canning. Look at that, that's for, that was on the front of the bull bar, just to stop um, the, the grass, the Spinifex grass going in the radiator, so that was essential. If you need one of those, just measure the bull bar, sensor measurement, 1.2 by 0.9, and we can make one up. The zip ties just poke through it, and you can see, you know, the holes in it. So, um, yeah, that did its job for sure. And uh, glad, I, glad I took that. This is some blocks of wood. Um, I use these. Um, I use those under the vehicle. If I need to level up the vehicle, if I can't dig a little hole to level the vehicle, I use those. Also, quite important if you're trying to jack um, you know, 
put a jack on, on top of one of these. So it is really handy to have um, a couple of the boards. You know, I've had to use them for a bit of firewood, I can. I picked that one up. I, I had two like that and I, I left them somewhere, just bits of timber, but uh, what else? And on this side is my dunny bag. Easy to grab, easy to get to. Toilet paper in there, lighter. That's my dunny bag. This was that little um, cable. I was able to um, hook onto here and here. Put a jerry can on and use that to um, siphon the fuel in. So that was really handy. That's the back, I've got a light here. These are the ladder brackets. I won't open the tent, but um, maybe we should. Anyway, inside that I've got uh, the, the ply bed base. Okay, that's it there. Then I've got a anti-condensation mat on top of that. We, we sell those, they're about eight, 10 mil. That, they're really good. Um, gives you a little bit of padding and also definitely helps a big deal in, in terms of moisture coming through your mattress or moisture collecting on the bottom of the mattress. Then we've got the 1.4 inflatable. We, you saw that a lot of times. Undo it, it inflates on its own. If it's not quite enough, you can blow a little bit of air in. Suck the air out in the morning. That was brilliant. Our two pillows are in there. The big drifter stocked and uh, sleeping bag, electric blanket, and then we had two small thin um, woolen blankets. Um, and that's pretty much it inside. A couple of those little lights. So I haven't done the tent. I haven't touched it. Nothing's come loose. It's just got um, two of the roof rails. Pretty standard. Um, 12,000 Ks. You can see the amount of dust in the back here. This is all bull dust. Um, dust and stuff. This is all, you know, from driving through that, that thick overgrown scrub. You can see a little bit of dust up here, but there's literally nothing on the zip. So we're getting into a very clean tent every night. Um, so yeah, so 100% dust proof. Let's talk about the tyres before we go to that side. So I just went down to Mobsy, he's the, the local tyre shop and because I've got uh, two or three plugs in the, these back tyres and they've still got a small leak in them. So I took them back and said look can you pull them out and patch them properly but the one's in the sidewall and he said you can't patch the sidewall so he hasn't been able to fix them. I'm going to probably put another plug in there but he basically said I need to buy new tyres which is a shame. Um, yeah, so, I mean, they've only done 12,000 Ks. They were brand new before I left. They were brand new. But the Goodyear Wranglers, what are they? The uh, Duramax, the Dura, Dura Track. So they have been a good tyre. Um, you know, Richard was talking about a stronger sidewall. So I asked um, Mobsy from the tyre shop, can we get a tyre that's got a stronger sidewall? These are a three-ply. And pretty much he said, you can't. You cannot buy... For a four-wheel drive like this size, um, you know, that's a 285, 265 or a 35, you can't buy a tyre with stronger sidewalls, they're just not available. Now, he did say that the, uh, the Goodyear Wrangler MTRs, which this truck's got, which is, this is the, the mud terrain, that's the base of the old terrain, right? So you can see the difference there. These were the Kevlar, as you can see it's written on there Kevlar. So these were a, uh, a three ply, these are three ply, but they're a three ply nylon. This has got two ply nylon and one ply is Kevlar. So these are a lot stronger sidewall and really what you want. But these haven't been available in Australia for 18 months. Um, you can't buy them and uh, they're that good. Issues with global supply all over the place. And um, you just cannot buy these tyres in Australia for the last at least 18 months, maybe two years. I was able to get a set of these before and Mobsy, you know, got these from I don't know where. He managed to get them. It's a real shame because these tyres, I reckon if I took them, I probably wouldn't have had a puncture. All right, you can see the Kevlar there. Right, so that's what it is. It's a two ply, with a three ply, one ply is Kevlar. And that's what I would have loved to have had on the trip. But... Um, just can't buy them. Now, they're, I'm not sure if they're made in America or American company at least, and they're just keeping all into America. 
you get selling like hotcakes there, I suppose, and they can't make enough to get over anywhere else. So that's a shame. So I was asking, yeah, is there a better tyre I can buy um, than the Goodyear Wrangler? These are a very good tyre, about the best you can get, but they just don't have that strong sidewall protection that the Kevlar ones have got. Um, so I don't know, maybe, yeah, I mean, that's nothing I can do, but that's interesting. Um, you know, Richard talked about his his tyres he had with stronger sidewall, which is the case, but I think they're old tyres too. I'm not sure if you can buy them anymore either. So that was that was interesting to learn. All right, so uh, I'll unlock this back. We were in Sydney the other day, so yeah, I'll lock all this up in Sydney. Um, we pretty much come from, well, we come down to uh, Newman and uh, we um, decided to hightail at home. We got from Newman to Sydney in about four and a half days, so we had to go pretty quickly. Um, but yeah, we're in Sydney for a couple of days and uh, had to lock things up. There's the leather I was trying to find the other day. So I've used a couple of bits of that. That's, that's very strong, doesn't burn, so the leather's great. These gloves are brilliant, we use them every night. Um, that's my little hammer kit. I didn't use that very much because we didn't really need any pegs and ropes. But, um, you know, needed to carry that. I didn't really touch this bag at all, but it's got a few little bits and pieces in there. Uh, an extension if I needed to yeah, another pole clamp for for a table I didn't need that because I use the, the ground ones well, that's our pot stand gaffer tape we'll talk about that very handy and um, that should go in here um, these are almost essential all right if you're especially traveling in convoy but I only had the one and look what happened to it you know, basically becomes unusable and that's quite quickly. So if you're going out back, uh, Glenn was, was smart. He carried, well, I didn't, I was in the front all the time, but he carried three or four of these or two or three. So I would say definitely take those. It's essential, but you need to take a couple of them because they can get damaged. Oil filter, uh, that's the fuel filter. Spare gas, didn't need that. And this is the other thing that's really important is um, we use that too, or Glenn did. A bit of sticky back uh, foam you know sometimes something's vibrating can be very handy a bit of uh, black sicker didn't need it but handy a little gas torch starting a fire didn't need it but handy um, so that's a few things in there more of my little knickknacks I basically before I left I had three or four bags like this in the 76, collecting stuff over the years, spare stoves, some carabiners, black tape, you know, tarp chokers, a uh, padlock. But I, I, I got rid of a lot of stuff. I, I went down from about three or four of those bags full of knickknacks down to one. So I sort of trimmed that down a bit. Zip ties, show you in here. Okay, so this is our, one of our bags uh, we sell. It's actually the bag for um, for the shovel. The little shovel fits in here, and they're such a handy bag. So I got I got them uh, available also. Zip ties now and there, spanner, spare hammer. I uh, didn't need that. I don't know why it's in there. Zip ties, two spanners. I didn't need two spanners. Um, that's the drawbar spanner. No, no, a tow ball spanner. Fencing pliers. Uh, they're quite important pair of pliers, a couple of saws, um, socket. Yeah, so I probably didn't need to carry that. I'm not sure why that's in there. Um, and I only needed to carry one of those, so I shouldn't have had that one in there, but um, that's a great little bag. You can see a flat bag, it's like a tool bag for any, any of those tools, right? They're not going to fit in them in my little tool bag. Alright, so here's our stocks and tool bag. Uh, some pliers and 
tools, shifters, banners, all that stuff in there. All right. So that's a great little kit and use that quite a bit. This is great, you can lie it flat, you can uh, roll it up so it does roll up. And uh, look at that. So great little toolkit. Easy to carry, very strong. Look at that. Alright, so that's great. Spare gas. Um, that's for the jet boil. Didn't need to use that, but um, glad I carried it. Quite a, important, I think, to have it in a little little bag, and that's protection. Um, obviously, you can eat, you can punch these really easy. You know, it can be punched, so that's good. Leather. Um, I don't know what's in here. Oh, yeah, straps. Just all ratchet straps. They're very important. Not too many, just enough. These little. Uh, carabiner thumb straps are brilliant. All right, so they're rated uh, 300 ton or something. No, not 300 ton, 300 kilos. And these are rated strap as well. So I've also got the ratchets. These are our small ratchets. And I've got some large ratchets there also. All right, all rated, as you can see. Um, we don't rate the thumb straps because they're like a fridge strap, you know. You don't really need to... Um, even though that is rated to three, four hundred kilos, uh, being a thumb strap, it's, it's not really important to rate it. It's basically a fridge strap. Um, but anything with a with a ratchet, they're all rated. So that's my ratchets. Little power cord, very handy. I use it every day um, for our uh, coffee. A couple of electrical things. I didn't use this. There's a work light. Um, 12 volt soldering and a little power pack. I didn't use those, but um, glad I carried them. This is a spare wrench I bought while I was over there, um, and because I only had a shorter one, so I thought it'd be handy. This can fit in here, so that should go in there. There's my handle for the high lift jack. Um, that's a windshield. Now, we don't have a stove. This is the um, windshield for the Kinja stove, Kinja stove windshield. But um, it's only small, very flat, easy to carry. Even on the fire pit with a fire table, if there's a wind blowing, you can use that to shelter the fire, uh, the charcoal, the pizza oven. We use that on the beach for the pizza oven. So that was really handy. But this is um, a shovel kit. Right, so I've got uh, spare handles here. Well, actually, that's a spare shovel kit. Yeah, I, I was going to give that to Richard, um, but he had these are brilliant. I pretty much carry a spare because this is such an essential bit of gear. Right, the other piece goes on here, the small handle. Um, I was going to give that to Richard, I forgot, but he had a, a long handle shovel, so I didn't need to. But um, very light. This we used a lot. This is our tripod. All right, so that's a three-stage tripod, um, but you can use it, you know, on the ground, three stages. Or if you only put two stages together, it works off the fire table. So that's our, our stainless tripod. Very light. These are brilliant. We use that a lot. There's your leather. A bit of this stuff's good too. We do sell this. This is. Um, should be on our website, but I've used this for different things. Just um, foam padding, sticky back. But it's, um, you know, you can cut it to any size. It's actually brilliant stuff. So if, that's, if you can't find it in the cart, let us know. Um, I always keep a bit of that. Well, here's a tent pole, ready to go nice and quick. Well, that's our four stage pole. These are brilliant. Look how small they fold up. Some more spares. Um, that's my jump, ARB jump starter kit, a bit of oil, brake oil, gear oil, diesel oil, and this is um, chainsaw sharpening and bar oil, so that's um, all essential gear. Right, so that's uh, the rear drawer. We've got the water tank here we talked about. Um, 
this is a hose. Whether you've got a caravan or four drive, this is pretty handy to carry. Right, we do have a tank here, you can see that there. Right, it's great to have the pump. While the bladders are good, they've got no pressure. Right, so it's gravity feed. If wanted to hose something down, we can. Um, important to have these. Also very important to have that. Caravan parks, a couple times I wanted to fill up water and I just didn't have this in here. And you also need both sizes, okay? So luckily, Glenn had one of these. So this is Glenn's. And uh, I don't know why I didn't have one. I thought I did. But essential to carry that because without that, you know, um, you just can't connect, of course. Um, WA had a lot of these smaller taps. So, and then, so that's about, I don't know, half a dozen meters. Click onto the tap. That's all you need to push onto the end of the bladder. All right, so that just literally push on there. That's all you need. And turn that on and that'll fill up you'll blow that up. You have to keep an eye on it. You can't sort of walk off and have a beer and forget about it. You've got to keep an eye on it. As soon as it's full, you um, pull it off, turn this off, and then you're, you're done, you know? So that was very handy. Um, that's my little bag there. We use that several times to refill the bladders. Um, I bought this in Broome, some um, fishing gear. Yeah, so just a, a nice reel. I, I probably should have taken one, but I thought a desert trip, I didn't need one. Caught a fish on this little lure. And um, yeah, just some basics. So that was good. I'll, I'll carry that more now. A couple of inspector bush bags. That's in there. Um, again, we saw our charcoal starter, first aid kit, fire extinguisher. And um, I've basically used a packet of these. Um, so that's, that's in there. This side. Oh, I'll just show you the awning. I've got my fishing rod inside there. So the fishing rod's up in here. These awnings are great, the 270. We only used it when we are in Broome camping a couple of weeks. We didn't use it on the trip at all. Um, just didn't need to. Because we've got these you know, canopy doors, you know, that gives you a bit of shelter. It's nice to be cooking and, you know, under a bit of shelter. But with these doors, it's just enough. Uh, if it had a rain or really hot sun, I would have put it up. When we were camping in Cape La Vique, we, we use it. Uh, it was essential. But whereas you saw Glenn and the Kiwi boys, they had their awning up every night. So, um, 100%, it's a brilliant awning. Just didn't need to use it much, but uh, would always have that on there. All right, so in here, this is how we pulled up, pretty much. Um, this little ladder, uh, little step was brilliant. Actually, um, it was just, we basically just sat it in on top there. How the hell that doesn't have a bag, I don't know. It was just one of those things. But, um, luckily, I've fixed that problem. So, there's a little bag for that um, because that's you know rattling and scraping on there so that's a nice little bag i got i rung the girls asked them to make that for me so that's now going to go in there um, and but this is a great little step but what it was why i didn't have a bag is because um, we used to sit this up on top of here like that and but you know with corrugations it just seemed to it, it fell off and was moving around so i ended up putting it here but that's why I didn't have a bag because it was sitting here. But really important to have that, and that was great. They're adjustable. See that there? Um, you know, I mean, Darren is not super short, but this canopy is quite high, you know. So it was really important for her to be able to stand here and do the cooking without, you know, this is essential. There's nothing worse than, you know, you just, even though I can't reach in there, what do you do then? You just climb in there. So stepping on that, you can reach everything, and really important. That's a little water. Right, I normally sat that there. That was great. Uh, there are on the website, yeah, I sold a heap of those this morning. These are our drinky bags. 
They've got um, downy spices and a lot of food. And <laughs> now, a lot of the time we had for lunch, we were having noodles. We showed that a few times. You know, just some some good quality noodles. Throw an egg in there, some extra spices, fish sauce. You know, you can really make a good meal out of it pretty quickly, just with your noodles. There are two food bags. All right, I used to set them up for Downey. This table, come out every time. Um, you know, drawers of course are brilliant. Uh, I don't need to go on much about those because we've been doing them for so long, everyone knows how good they are. But yeah, drawers are brilliant. This table we set up every time. Best thing about the drawer has always been the table. All right, so that would just go there. Like that. Super strong, fully adjustable, and um, we do you know, cooking prep here. Just another bag we had. Um, just some spares, you know. You, you always need a bit of spare room, right? There's some um, spare water, a pumpkin we didn't use, some honey, bits and pieces. You need somewhere to throw, you know, on the way back, grab some drinks and been grabbing them out of there. So you need somewhere to just throw spare stuff, you know. It's really important also, I've found, you, you can't leave home 100% full because you're going to accumulate a bit of stuff on the way. You know, um, your mate might break down, you know, it happened out there on the trip, you know, on others, you know, and they've got to distribute the gear to other vehicles. So you don't want to be 100% full, 90% at the most, you know. You need a bit of space where you can put other things. I had to buy that somewhere. A bit of a pain rather than these because when that's finished, I mean, you could burn that, but it uh, makes a bit of a mess. Uh, very hard to get rid of, but that's some water we had. Jerry can of fuel. I was able to put two jerry cans here. Um, I, I've had an a empty jerry can in here, and I've had two on the roof. I can fit three on the roof standing up. So if they are full, they are standing up, but um, two, two is enough. You know, you can feel that weight up there. With coil springs a bit high, you do feel that. As soon as I took a jerry can off the roof, um, I could feel that, that weight. Um, this is my beer can bag. This is great. That's got my carton of beer in there. And um, I didn't have any, any beers. You know, you can see a bit of wear, but none of them, um, none of them broke so that was really good yeah so i didn't have any trouble uh the beers were in there um in these drawers hopefully it's clean down here <laughs> well that's supposed to be in there that's what that's for um we've got these in there so that worked really good that's supposed to be like that Got some eggs left over. Eggs. Huh? Eggs. Want the eggs? Right. Yeah, Billy, cutlery. I went through the cutlery before I left and made sure I didn't have too much. So we've got cutlery there, chopboard, a little bag of some knives and other cutlery, like longer utensils. Um, oh, I love this. Yeah, you know, get this beautiful timber there and just chop with a chainsaw and it's nice for a pot stand. There's our stock and plates okay, in there and our little single induction. This little thing's brilliant. We've had that several trips now, uh, about three years, hasn't missed a beat. And um, yeah, it's all you need. That's been great. Two of these, very good. One for the fire and one for cooking. So we always have those. That's it in there. Pretty simple. I, bet, I thought this in broom was handy rather than running the big power cord out. Um, because when you got this down here, the coffee machine just doesn't reach. So I, I bought that and it's handy. Um, we've got two chairs. And this is the X-Leg table. We use this every day, every night we set it up. Uh, that's the small X-Leg aluminium table. Very light. Folds up, slim, folds up similar to the chair, so you can see there it fits in nicely. Um, this is Downey's, uh, use this every day. Um, I didn't use this at all. So this is for Downey washing up. So it's just a bit bigger size, a bit deeper DOD, so 
Oh, is that like Danny? Yeah, like awesome. It? I like it. Um, it's our inverter there. Now, what happened on the trip is this inverter, this cable, runs along here and powers this power point. The chairs are out. On the first day, it's, these stopped working. This still worked, but these didn't work. So I couldn't get under Kaido, and um, by the time I rung him, we were halfway through the trip. All it was, somehow, this plug came out. See that? Now, that's what I mean too about understanding your system. Um, it was a bit of a pain because that didn't work. I had to run a power cord out each each time. But all it was, this plug came out a little bit. I couldn't see it in there. It's, it's black. You can hardly see it. But all I had to do is push that in, and uh, it was all running again. And also, this was working. That runs the power on the other side for charging my battery. So I had to run power cords. If I had it just known to push that in, it would have made life a lot easier, which I, I worked out after. These pockets on the front here are brilliant. I'm using them all the time. That's my coffee, um, salt and pepper, you know, um, those rags. These are great, these little things. Um, all the roadhouses have got them now. William Creek, Colga Pub, Marble Bar. So we made a little collection of those. And actually, um, uh, we've got a few more inside. We're going to do a drifter one as well, the mini mugs. Great for, you know, um, whiskey, wine, whatever, you know. So. Um, these are great. These these are attached with some sail track. In here I've just got spare bags chucked in there, a few spare bags. Um, fridge. So yeah, you can see how that's starting to ice up there. It just gets more and more ice. These fridge bags I think are brilliant, especially when we it just keeps it nice and tidy and together. You know, you can pull it out a little bit, things don't fall down, it just helps you keep it nice and organized. So they were brilliant. This was brilliant. Helps you utilize that space. Um, we do have those available now. So this is the kit. Pretty much that's the same fridge kit. This is the, well, it's the Bushman upright. I think it's the 85. Um, yeah, it's the BR85. And you can see you've got the, the mesh here. We didn't have any problems with circulation. You know, the cold, you know, you'd think was well, canvas. Does, the, does it circulate air? We didn't have any problems. Everything was nice and cold. You've got their mesh there. I did want the canvas on the bottom so that if things were spilling, they didn't soak right through, you know, and uh, make a mess, which often happens. So they're available now. Something else that I didn't have, and we just got um, the girls are doing this on, on, on the way, time I was away. So this is, uh, you can see a little arclet there and a bit of fiberglass and a ring. So it's just a paper towel holder, but it's got the, um, you know, the runner there. So look at that. Pulls out so nice. That would have been great on the trip. We could have hung that you know, up here. What do you think, Darren? Mm, Pretty good, mm. isn't it? Probably having it there. And um, paper towel is something that we, we carried with us, but here it was here. Just didn't have a, a paper towel holder. You set it there and it blows away. And you know, whereas um, there's a little, I can I can hook that on there um, through there. And that would have been brilliant. So these are available now. They'll be on the website shortly. And the secret of this is, you've got that little runner. So it just pulls out really nicely with that. So that's great. That's available. Um, this is a new, also another one for toilet paper. So they made the same little system, right? For a little toilet paper, look at that. That's pretty cool. Um, yeah, so that's a couple of new products we could have carried with us. What have we got here? I think that covers it all there. Um, yeah, is this my new t-shirt. Um, make it happen. I was on the phone this morning, my first day back at work. I probably made at least 50 phone calls by lunchtime. And about 40 times I was saying to people, just make it happen, all right? Let's get this done, let's make it happen. I mean, that's what I say all the time, you know? Get this on the website, let's make it happen. So that's my little saying I seem to say a lot of. Click the Drifter, the 76. They'll be available now, so they're on the website. Uh, this, yeah, I was in canvas today, so I picked up these things. A little uh, paper towel bag, a couple of um, hoodie, club grubbery leather stubby, hoodie, um, hoodie and John Larder stubby holders, they're available. Ah, uh, this one here. 
uh, run through to Lee because uh, this is getting, you see that, very damaged. You do not want to break the zip on these bags. If you break that zip here, that'd be a nightmare. You know, you just can't close, you can't close your bag. You can see they got damaged. Um, you know, that's, that's a normal person. You know, they might try and say it's a warranty. It's not a warranty, it's been damaged. But we could sell you another one at cost price. We'd give you another one at cost price, so. Um, we do have these spare, but you don't want to damage it, right? So I had a, um, I had this, this is a, the, um, well, not that one. This one, this is a water, it's a water bag, you know, the 10 litre water bag, right? So I was thinking we need something on there. Uh, that seemed to work good. So I just put it on there, tied it on. And you can see how much of a hiding it copped. I had it strapped on with a fridge strap, which ended up wearing so much it broke. But that protected my awning. Um, I rang the girls and asked them to make something for me. So I said, make something that fits over the end of the awning. Get some loops on here you can put a, a strap through, which they've done. So that's just a fridge strap. And uh, look at that. Haven't tried it yet, but... If I was going on that trip again, I would 100% get one of those. And um, see how that works there. All right, you can tuck that in. Now your awning is then fully protected. Um, there may be a bit of water going in there as well, but that's a nice little idea. And I know, haven't seen anyone with one of those, but that's that's a good idea. You do not want to damage that. Even just going in the bush, you can easily damage your bags. So that's something you could use. And you know, you might be able to use it for something else as well. Um, but anyway, that's pretty handy. Um, this is a new case that Kai just made up for me. These are things I got today from the factory. Glasses case. Uh, when I was in Bangkok with Darren, Earlier in the year, I lost my nice glasses case. So I got Kai to make one up. So two mil leather with with the, um, what do you call that? Moleskin, Australian moleskin inside. So I've got him now to do one with uh, a belt loop. You can hang it there. Uh, and also this one here too. So, um, you know, reading glasses. Um, or these are also made for your, your, your drifter sunglasses. So they'll be available soon. And this, of course, is a new bag for that little hot water heater. So with the, the new straps, it's got the air pocket cut out. You can see the development in that. We had this made with mesh, then we cut the pocket out, then the handle didn't work. So then we put the handle here. And that's got a timber base as well. So that is now ready for sale. Um, yeah. I also grabbed this from the shop this morning from Mark. It's $209, the Anna Drive Dometic. Uh, 12 20 amp solar control so I need that in in the truck that would have made a big difference you know pretty much uh, 300 watts of solar on the roof did almost absolutely nothing the whole trip because the driving the whole trip pulling up around dusk and uh, I was a bit short of power as well on a few occasions so if that had had a separate one I mean I don't know why they do it put them all in together but Maybe it saves space, but it's a bit of a useless system, you know, having a DC-DC from the engine combined with the solar. Like, what's the point of that? Driving during the day and it's night time, it's night. You want these working together. So, 300 watts, I'll be pumping in 12 to 15 amps during the day. That would have been really handy. I'm going to mount that in there later. Um... I think that's it. What else, Danny? Little tissue box. These are great. Um, you know, your little wet wipes, tissues. Great to use. Uh, you can see we've used that a lot. Just sits on the floor and um, Danny uses that a lot. That was great. Also a um, tissue box. Again, you know, it's nice to have things. If you had that, you know, normally in your car, it's just going to fall apart and break and tissues go everywhere. So it's nice to have a, you know, a good, strong canvas bag. Makes a lot nicer. So that's a couple of good products we've got for the, the wet tissues and the tissues. 
Max tracks. Okay, there are small carabiners, stainless carabiners. They stayed there the whole trip, didn't move. Um, you know, really, you only need each vehicle really needs two of these recovery boards. Uh, if you're on your own, you need four, I think. So I didn't touch them, but I was on the beach up at Bard Creek, got totally bogged, and I was nearly ready to grab them off. And if I didn't have these, I'd be stuffed, you know. So although I didn't need them, but if I couldn't get out where I was, they would have been essential. I would have been able to get out, no worries. So worth carrying. If I did this trip again, Glenn's got two. Um, I would have only carried two. But if I'm doing anything solo, I would always carry four. So just real quick on this torch. Right, so these torches <coughs> uh, apparently from one of the videos I showed this and they're seeing like hotcakes in the shops at the moment but this is the new 2k Nebo all right so it's really handy walking along you can just do that go to the toilet middle of the night whatever you've got your torch there look at that bright how bright that is all right you can go a spot you can go like that Right, so you've got your other settings, you know, flashing and red, all that sort of stuff. What I love about these, I also got a magnet. Um, right, so what's metal? Look at that. Okay, so you're working under the car, there's the magnet on the end. And um, look at that. That is brilliant, you know. If you're underneath the car working on it, right, that is really clever. So there's a magnet on the end. Um, and I'd say that is a brilliant torch. What I really love about it is it's a Type-C, um, you, know, you don't have to pull the batteries out. You just stick a plug-C in there, or a Type-C connector, and that'll charge, right? It's the same as what I've got. Type-C is, oh, I've got a Type-C up in here, right? So I can just plug that in there. I charged this once, and what this is really good for, if you're pulling up and it's dark and you're trying to find a campsite, uh, most of the time you want to pull up when you're camping, touring, you want to pull up well before dark. But when we're traveling, hightailing at home, doing 1,000 k's a day, you're going to stop 8, 9, 10 o'clock at night. You really need a torch to be able to see if there's a fence or, you know, you need a really good, strong torch to find yourself a campsite. Um, so that's essential. The other one I used was this, which is a little Nebo uh, 1000, I think it is. These are on the web and uh, these are brilliant, you know, a good headlight torch is one of your main things when you're camping. Again, it's got the magnetic piece on it, right? So this is, um, I love this for a few reasons. The best headlight torch I've had, I've, I've carried some of the other old ones I've got, but I found that every time it went flat, the other, the original Nebo had to unscrew it, pull the battery out, have a separate charger. That charger only worked on that battery. I kept losing the charger, I kept losing the cable. It was, you know, it was a good little torch, but I, it, it went flat very quickly. I'd have to charge every second night. This thing I charged twice in five weeks. I used it every night. Okay, so you've got um, three settings, right? It's important to have those three settings. You don't want it super bright. The less you can use it, the better, you know, you're not blinding people as well. So generally, you know, you can turn it off to um, low. I usually had it on there. Um, and that's it really you can pull that off okay it's a clip on there magnet there on and off there that's it not too heavy and and also the good thing is um charging you wind off that side there not that side you wind off this side and there's your us micro usb so straight in there you don't have to pull the battery out you can get the battery out this way but you don't need to wind it off usb in there plug it in brilliant you know so i found i only charged that twice um, there is a smaller one of these and there's a bigger one so in the store in gloucester um, we've got a smaller one which i had for Derny, and then there's a bigger one as well the bigger one i found i didn't want to use i gave it to kaido a little bit too heavy for my head with this one's it's a good balance between um, being bright enough um, and and long enough battery but not too heavy on your head it's nothing worse than having a headlight torch that really weighs you down and 
big batch of packs on the back. So that was a really nice balance. Only recharged it twice for the whole trip, used every night. Um, and just enough light around camp. Now if you're gonna go off and, it's not a, it's not a big s uh, spotlight, searchlight, you know. It's just enough for around camp. But, um, you know, if you're going off and you need more super bright light, then you can just carry that as well, uh, which was which was great. I think that's all the features. This has got different colors in it. Um, yeah, different colors, but that was um, brilliant. So they're the two key points I had. That little bag was great to carry up into the tent at night. My keys, sometimes I chuck the keys in there. Not went around the bush, but went around um, you know, places where someone might come past. You know, you like to lock the car. What do you do with the keys? Throw them in there. Uh, a little water bottle at night and then you know you're not up and down half a dozen times finding things so in the morning you just throw that back in in the car that was really handy for in the rooftop tent all right well that's a that's that's a good old video um looks like i'll go better put all this away now before it gets dark or starts raining and um yeah so i'll combine this with another little video of five minutes driving into town yesterday i'll explain a couple of things and uh other apart from that yeah this is where we did that video five weeks ago um and there's another little run around of you can pretty much see everything i've there's nothing there that i haven't pulled out everything i've i've taken i've pretty much used um right just one thing i forgot was this drawer thanks in the back here get some water a uh, bit of the um this does pretty good. Makes a great coffee. It's not real good for you, really, but it, it does pack well. It doesn't go off and um, pretty handy for traveling, but yeah, it's not actually that good for you. A few water bladders, a uh, bit of water bottles, and this is our little um, our, uh, mini camp oven, the bread oven. That's great. A little coffee in here. And here's our coffee machine. So that, you have a jet boil coffee machine. So that's uh, in a little Stockton bag and use that a lot. Here's the uh, paper towel holder. You can see that's just sitting up there attached with some double sided Velcro. And that. Yeah, so that's sitting up there. I'm gonna close that. It's gonna take up this space here. Anyway, just packed it all up and uh, this last minute or so cut off there before, but I'm just sort of saying that, yeah, that was it. One thing I also forgot to mention was the suspension. You know, that long wheel base was brilliant and that suspension, uh, I'd say, was fantastic. Um, you know, there was times of the track when the, the disco could only do on 15, 20. We were sitting on 40 easy on heavy corrugations and um, so it handled the corrugations brilliant. The long wheelbase was great. So the drivetrain and the uh, suspension, well worth, I think, the coils. Um, but yeah, the truck itself didn't have any problems. We we're fortunate, but we did take it steady. We didn't muck around. We weren't dawdling along, but uh, we didn't have problems. And yeah, I definitely nursed it. That's what you need to do when you're a bush, really. You're not, you know, different YouTube channels. I mean, that's what they're trying to do, go out and break stuff. That's fine, you know, that's what they need to do. But um, this sort of trip, definitely don't want to break anything. And for that reason, you just got to nurse it along. All right. Thanks, guys. We'll get this loaded shortly. See ya.